Hi, welcome to Sambona Wildlife Reserve, situated a mere three hours drive from Cape Town. The reserve is 54,000 hectares in size, which is the same size as Singapore. The drive from Cape Town will take you along the famous Route 62, which is the longest wine route in South Africa. You'll have an opportunity to stop and enjoy some of South Africa's finest wines. Sambona is originally made up of 19 farms, which was bought out by the group. Once we had bought out the farms, the biggest restocking of wildlife in the Western Cape started to take place. And today we have one of the most amazing and unique products that you will find within the group and the Little Karoo. One of the biggest advantages of coming to visit us at Sambona is it is situated in a malaria-free area. The word Sambona means sand from the people who used to inhabit the land. Borna being their vision. And I think that is the most important thing on this property. It's not only about the wildlife is more than just the big five reserve that's the vision of what the sand had and that's what we're trying to capture at Sambona. Well, Sambona is uh, spectacular in terms of a number of uh, biodiversity areas that we've got in the reserve but uh, the most important thing that we wanted to achieve on the reserve itself was to be able to take the 54,000 hectares that was available and look historically at the species that used to occur here within the wild. Animal species such as lions, rhinos, elephant were the first species to be back in the Western Cape on this reserve for over 350 years. And this vegetation type itself is uh, one of the most uh, biodiversity uh, hotspot areas within the world and uh, is actually the most rich in terms of arid vegetation anywhere on the planet. So over the years a lot of the animal species were introduced that uh, naturally used to occur within this area and we work very carefully to be able to monitor the effects on the vegetation and the population growth on the reserve itself. Well, the White Lion project on San Borna developed from unfortunate circumstances when uh, we actually rescued two white lions from elsewhere in the country that were living in terrible conditions. They were brought through to the reserve and were never able to uh, survive within the wild. But uh, once they bred and we had youngsters born on the reserve, it became a priority to be able to make sure that they would be able to survive for themselves within the bush. We've uh, ab been able to return them into an integrated pride system where they've learned how to hunt with tawny females. And this has allowed the project to be a success so that we've got an integrated pride of lions, self-sustaining, free roaming, the only situation in the world that you'd be able to find white lines in these type of conditions. Well, the river iron rabbit is one of the smaller species that we've got in the reserve, but uh, is one of the most important due to its conservation status. It is uh, critically endangered and uh, current conservation predictions are that unless uh, the trends are reversed, it's going to be extinct within the next 50 years. We've got a healthy population on St. Borna at this time and what's uh, vital about the reserve itself is that it's large enough to be able to ensure that uh, the species is able to uh, survive on the reserve without any conservation impacts such as gene flow negatively affecting the population. Leopards within the Western Cape once again are an incredibly special species. Within one site so far we've been incredibly lucky to get uh, several uh, pictures of leopards moving through that site. One of these has uh, brought a, a couple of photographs of the female leopard that's got two youngsters with her at this time, as well as the territorial male leopard that often moves through that area as well. Because the reserve is so large, 54,000 hectares, the game drives traverse over large distances to obviously try and find as many as of the bigger animals that are on offer here, but also to look at the smaller aspects, um, your fossils, your geology, your plants, your birds. You have the Belair Dam, 160 hectares of water, which is quite a surprise for the little crew, so a great feature. What you can also do, we have set programs for game drives, but you can tailor make it to your guests' interests and needs. And one of the fantastic features on San Borna is again, you know, you have 54,000 hectares of space, and essentially you need to explore it potentially on foot. If you have a walking qualified guide, 
You could go out on a drive if you see something, for example, a cheetah, and all the circumstances are in your favor, you could easily find yourself getting off the vehicle, going on foot, um, not approaching too close, but just feeling what it's like to, to track an animal on foot in these huge open spaces and to be intimate with that animal on that level. You know, the bubble has been taken away, you're on the same playing field, and that's when guests really start truly experiencing what a safari is about. To explore San Borno on foot, you find we have these incredible quartz patches on the reserve, and which are obviously reflecting all the sunlight. You have specialized plants which grow there, you have kabams, mesums, and what you'll find in the heat of summer, a lot of your plains antelope, your springbuck, Oryx, Elant will specifically go and lie in there because it's up to 10 degrees cooler. So it's again, you know, small little intricacies that you can get your guests involved with and, and open their eyes. You know, safari is not just Big Five, it's, it's a holistic picture that needs to be explained. Then you can potentially also explore various rock art sites that we have on the, on the reserve that we've identified. You know, some aren't always available to guests, but the ones that are available, we can take you up there and explore you know, rock art paintings which are between five to three thousand years old. So potentially also a great little activity for the children to go up and look at the various figures that the Bushmen have painted. Um, there's one figure there that could be representative of a swallow or mermaid. So just exploring that whole cultural existence that's coming into effect here and you know creating an awareness with, with our guests that there is heritage on the reserve and that comes across as equally important. Another activity is cycling in the southern section of the reserve. Um, a three hour activity uh, orientated around your, your person who wants to get a little bit more exercise um, whilst on safari. So three hours observing the sights, listening to the sounds while you're cycling. Another great silent way to experience the, the peacefulness of San Buona. The building located behind me is our new staging post. It's located 13 kilometers from our main gate. It will give our guests an opportunity to stop, enjoy the scenery, have a refreshment before carrying on their journey to their respective lodges. The public areas at Tilney Manor, the lounge and the dining room are located in a historic building that was completed in the late 1800s and was once occupied by Mr. Thomas Tilney, the postmaster. Tilney Manor consists of six individual rooms. All the rooms are extremely spacious. All rooms have an individual fireplace for those chilly winter evenings. They have outdoor double showers as well as a freestanding bath and indoor shower. For relaxation, the guests have an opportunity to either use the relaxation retreat or just relax around the pool area where they can be served drinks and light meals. All the rooms have an absolutely spectacular view over the Karoo landscape and also surrounded by towering peaks of mountains. Welcome to Gondwana, the only lodge on the malaria-free San Borna Wildlife Reserve to cater for families. Of our 12 bedrooms, 8 are interleading to enhance the focus on the family and the other 4 have sleeper couches. Children over the age of 4 are encouraged to go with their parents on game 